Hello, everybody, and once again, welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and this is our Tuesday reading of the Octurian Anthology. So if you are new here on Tuesdays, we typically read through Tom Kenyon's channeling. We This is our third, I believe, our third book by Tom Kenyon. We've done the Magdalene Manuscript, the Hathor material, and now we're looking at the Octurians. We're almost through with it. But we have part two of Esu today. I believe I'm saying that right. Yesu. E-S-U is how you spell it. And so we're looking at his second um, his second channeling today. Of course, last week it had a lot to do with meditation and manifestation. You can find all of those episodes, all the previous episodes in the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene, which will be down in the description box below. Again, if this is your first time joining us. All right, you guys. So we're going to start. We have um, a quote from Frefius. I hope I'm saying that name right as well. I believe he's the next person we're going to be channeling. That's spelled F-R-E-P-H-I-O-S, Frefius. Prefia says, you share DNA from a myriad of intergalactic civilizations. You are now on a fast track, as the saying goes, to your higher evolutionary potential. You are living in the present, redeeming the past, and creating a glorious future if you choose it. If you do not choose the higher resonant frequencies of your potential, you will be cursed by your past and live in a future not worth living. And as many of you know, if you've been on this channel for a while, I'm a firm believer that the 12 tribes of Israel are actually our DNA strands. The 10 missing tribes are the 10 DNA strands that are not active within you. So I agree with this. It's all intergalactic. All right. So Yesu part two. Yesu part two. Page 135 if you're following along. So again, he's the Octurian meditation master. I would like to reveal a meditation method that I teach my fellow Octurians. It is an ancient technique for the shifting of conscious awareness. Given some similarities between our chakra system, this method will work for human beings as well. Let me address the fundamental philo philosophical quandary first and give the technique. In your current perceived reality, the physical world seems to be real in a concrete way. You can touch things, and there are boundaries between objects. As you move upward in a vibratory state of consciousness, you perceive the physical world quite differently. In these higher dimensional states of consciousness, you realize through direct perception that the physicality of your world is an illusion. There are more space within the objects of your world when perceived from the higher dimensional states of consciousness. This is in keeping with the insights of the quantum physics. Indeed, most of the matter that comprises your body is a very small percentage of the volume that you call yourself, meaning your body. It's interesting. I just had this conversation this past Sunday with one of my students. I was talking a lot about plant medicine and microdosing. And I, I told the student the first time I ever uh, took a day trip, I... um had that realization that everything around us is just an illusion. It's all a hologram. And this was before, long before I ever started studying yoga, which that again is the crux of yoga too, the Shiva and the Shakti, the nature and the soul. The differences between the two, even though the two are, are interwoven together, there is a difference between them. And the Shakti, the body, the nature is the creation of the soul for the soul to know itself. Therefore, it is quite the illusion. And this is where we get things like levitation. People who know how to levitate. Yes, there are is photographic evidence of the early 1900s when these explorers from the West, from Europe, were making their way into the Himalayas in India. They would take pictures of yogis levitating. This is the whole story of Jesus walking on water. That's what that is. That's levitation. All right. This is this is the idea that you start to understand the complexities of of nature and that you are the creator of nature. And so within that consciousness, you, too, are able to shift consciousness and change even the weight of your own body. Wild, isn't it? 
Each dimension presents an illusion of solidity for that being that resides in that dimension. This kind of goes along with the law of one, too, right? We have first density, second density, third density, fourth density, fifth density, sixth density. Every density or weight of that particular realm is different. Like third density is heavier than fourth density. We reside primarily in the fifth dimension, while some of our more advanced Octurians reside in higher dimensions. For us, the fifth dimension is real. We can touch the objects in our world as clearly and as distinctively as you experience your world. But were you to experience our reality through your current, vi current vibratory level, it would seem ephemeral, insubstantial, and you would not be able to touch the physical objects in our reality unless you were able to raise your vibratory rate to match ours. The technique I am about to share with you is an ancient Octarian meditation method for shifting dimensional awareness. It will allow you to slide up and down the dimensional scale. By this, I mean that once you have mastered the meditation technique, you can move your consciousness into any dimensional reality that you choose. Your physical body remains in three-dimensional continuum, but your consciousness is free to travel to other dimensions. And this, again, I'm going to have to give a warning and give a disclaimer. I know I said this last week in part one. This is actually not meditation. Okay, I want to be very, very clear about this. I'm going to continue reading because I don't believe in censorship. But I, I do really encourage you guys, if you are interested in meditation, the first thing I'm going to ask you, are you trying to meditate? Or are you trying to escape? Because there's a huge difference. So if in meditation, you're allowing your imagination to run wild to the point where you you think you're given information from the divine, then darling, you're not meditating. Meditating means a one-pointed focus. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. That's the Sanskrit. So the chittam is the thoughts, the brain waves, the brain stuff. And chittam is the actual brain. So vritti is the thoughts, chittam is the brain. Narodaha means nothingness. So in meditation, you're trying to actually remove the thought. You're not trying to engage in thought. You're trying to remove it. Right? So this is why a lot of people do something called japa meditation, which where you're you're given something to preoccupy your mind, like a mantra, so that you can control the mind. So the mind doesn't go all crazy and delusional, right? And so I'm finding this a lot in our world. A lot of people who are in this world are very, very new to spirituality. Very new to spirituality. And so they're getting stuck in garbage spirituality. You need a teacher. You absolutely need a teacher. And that teacher needs to be a legitimate teacher. You need to see that person's resume. Ask them who their teacher is. How many years have they been doing it? What is their relationship with the lineage? How do they teach this? Because otherwise, if you are practicing meditation without a teacher... You are running the risk of going into psychosis or neurosis. Okay, so I just want to be very clear about that. All right, so do not use meditation as an excuse to daydream. Do not think that everything you think about in meditation is a command from God. If you're doing that, stop it. Okay? All right, so let's keep going. It is here that I feel I should advise you as some of the effects before you experiment with the method. The first thing to understand is the mystery of your breath as you enter into these higher dimensional states of consciousness. When your consciousness is focused, is fixated on a point, as in the meditation, yep, your brain wave activity is altered. So here, he's correct here. So let me read that again. So when your consciousness focus is fixated on a point, what did I just me say meditation is? It's a one-pointed focus of the mind. As in, in the meditation, your brainwave activity is altered. Why? Because we are trying to stop the, the mind from having too much control over the experience because thoughts are powerful. 
After a period of mental focus in this manner, your breath will tend to become more and more shallow. Mm -hmm. And there will eventually be episodes where you stop breathing altogether. This pause in the breath cycle is a signature that you have entered a profoundly deep state of consciousness. And it is in these pauses within the breath that you jump into other dimensions. So that is all correct. Absolutely, that is correct. You cannot force breath to alter in this way. You must allow it to evolve into this cycle. My brief experience with human beings tells me that most of you are impatient and tend to force outcomes. You cannot force this. Again, do not fucking daydream. If you want to take time to daydream, that's fine. But know that it's just daydreaming. It's not meditation. It's not spiritual. Okay? It's daydreaming. In this meditation practice, your breath is like a pony. And your point of focus is something it finds most curious and delightful. If you try to lead the pony, it will balk. But if you let it follow its own course, it will be attracted by the force of your attention and your breath will become shallower and more relaxed. And eventually, when you have mastered the technique, the breath will stop. Do not be concerned when you stop breathing. It does not mean you're going to die. It means you have entered a deep state of quiescence and your consciousness is freed from the fetters of your physicality to move through the dimensions freely. When your physical body needs more oxygen, you will spontaneously take a breath. When this occurs, you simply make sure your focus of attention is on the point that I will discuss in a moment. As you continue to walk through the meditation, you will find these periods of quintessence get longer and longer. There is a phenomenon that occurs in these deep states of consciousness regarding the breath. In these deepest states of altered consciousness, your subtle energy body receives an inflow of energy that is transferred to your physical body. Thus, it is possible to remain in these states of quintessence for several minutes at a time, or even for several hours in the most advanced stages of meditation. This is a very advanced stage that cannot be forced. So the method of meditation that I use is the Tristana method. And that is typically used in the Ashtanga lineage. So the tri method of breath, pranayama, dristi, our focus point, as he was just talking about, and asana, our posture. And people know asana means posture, but it's more direct definition is a seat for meditation. So basically what we do in traditional yoga, again, let me reiterate this, in traditional yoga, the yoga from India, is we take meditation within the physical practice. So the practice isn't preparing you for meditation. The practice is the meditation. A lot of people will understand this like long distance runners, the runners high, that's a physical meditation. So what you're doing with the Tristana method, with the asana, the breath, the dristi, is you're giving something to your mind for your mind to be occupied on doing. It's breathing, it's finding a focal point. There are nine different dristis. There's the nose looking up, down, left, right, all that kind of stuff. Belly button, different dristis. Each posture has their own dristi. So you've got your eyes focused, you're breathing, and you're holding a shape. This is giving your mind enough mental activity so that the thoughts can't go hay haywire into daydreaming. Right? And that's when the meditation starts. Okay? So I'm going to reiterate this again. I know this is going to be shocking to people who are new to spirituality. If you are sitting down to daydream, you are not meditating. Simple as that. Two different things. All right. You must let your breath evolve to this stage. There is a final consideration before I share the method. It has to do with protection. Specifically, it has to do with protecting yourself as a transit through other dimensions of consciousness. What you experience in other dimensions of consciousness is dictated by your vibratory state. This means the collective vibration of your being, including the elevated aspects of yourself and the unevolved negative aspect of yourself. This is a very mixed bag, as you say. If you were to do this method when you were low in a low emotional state of conflict, the chances are high that you would encounter low level beings in the dimension you are exploring. This is why protection is considered necessary. And this, this is a type of insurance policy. It adjusts your vibratory level without changing it. This method involves the use of light. And I personally find it interesting as an Arcturian meditation master that our understanding of the highest vibratory levels of light is shared by the Tibetan Buddhist of your planet. For us and for them, 
clear light is the highest vibratory state. I realize that many experienced meditators reading this may use white light in various forms or other co uh, colorations like violet light. All these frequencies of light have their place in their application. However, clear white light, meaning no coloration, which is why it's referred to as the clear light, is the initiate vibratory expression of the most elevated consciousness. In the teachings of this Octarian meditation technique, I always ensure that the one I am teaching masters the clear light before proceeding into the meditation. It is very simple. And there are two fundamental ways you can engage this. One is through direct perception of clear light, and the other is to imagine yourself surrounded by a clear diamond. Diamonds are the closest gems in your dimension that express clear light. For most individuals, it will be easiest to imagine yourself inside a clear diamond. For most advanced individuals who have made contact with clear light in themselves, they would simply sense it directly surrounding them as they enter into the meditation. The Nakura. We call this form of meditation the Nakura. Find a position that is comfortable for you to sit for a period of time. As you experience this meditation more often, your period of meditating will get longer. Make sure then that your position is comfortable for you. Generally speaking, it is better that your spine be relatively erect. If you lie down, there is a higher possibility that you will enter into a sleep state. And while it is possible to jump into other dimensions when you are asleep, there is less likelihood that you will remember the encounter. Thus, after you have settled into the position you wish to use for the meditation, you bring into the protection you wish to use, either the diamond or the clear light. Then you temporarily put both hands above your head palms together so the base of your palms is right up around the crown and the highest point where your fingers touch is your point of focus in other words place your hands in prayer position on the top of your head to determine the correct location then you just bring your hands back down to a position where they can remain comfortable without strain by focusing your mental attention at this point above your crown chakra you enter a channel through which you can move through the dimensions as you've become familiar with these transient states, you will become more comfortable and at ease. If at any point in the process you experience a headache or tension, it is most likely due to over-concentration. You do not concentrate on this point above your crown chakra. You simply let your awareness reside there, resting at this point like a feather resting in the palm of your hand. In the beginning stages of this meditation, as you are learning the method, I suggest you confine yourself to around five minutes. That, yeah. So, guys, if you meditate over 15 minutes, you're screwed. I don't know. Whoever thought it was a good idea to sit for an hour, that is most definitely going to put you into psychosis. You're most definitely going to walk away with a mental disorder. Okay? Five to, to 15 minutes. I tell my beginners three to five minutes. Tops. That's it. And if you are sitting for an hour, what are you trying to escape? Why are you trying to avoid being human? All right, let's start that again. Do not concentrate on this point above your crown chakra. You simply let your awareness reside there, resting at this point like a feather resting in the palm of your hand. In the beginning stages of this meditation, you are learning the method, method I suggest to confine yourself to around five minutes. When you are comfortable with five minutes of mental attention and this point above your crown chakra, you can expand the time as you choose. Please do not go over 15 minutes. Please don't do that. No meditation teacher is going to tell you, no legitimate meditation teacher is going to tell you to go over 15 minutes. Bad things. You will end up in a mental institution. If you do hour, an hour or more of meditation daily, you will end up, end up going into derangement. We call this point above your crown chakra the kura which roughly translates meaning meaning the gate to eternity. The word na means meditation. Thus, the word na cura means meditation on the gate to eternity. It is important to understand that reorienting to your physical nervous system is important after the nakura. Exactly. So reorienting to your physical nervous system. That is why, my friends, you do not meditate for over 15 minutes. Once again, you came here to be here on earth. Don't spend all your time here on earth trying to get off of earth. 
because that just means you're going to have to come back and do it again. All right, you can't skip the grades. There's no leapfrogging through grades. Even we Octurians reorient ourselves back to our dimension after using Nectura to explore other dimensions. This is especially important if you have made a dimensional jump and experience another dimension vividly. It takes time for your nervous system to reorient itself back to your physical reality after such encounters. Do not rush this period of reorientation. If you do, it can result in headaches, body aches, and the feeling of being out of sorts. So it's best to avoid these. The method I teach for reorienting to one's dimensional reality involves the breath and the five senses. When you have determined that you have meditated as long as you wish, you shift your attention from the cur above the crown to your breath. And for a few moments, you simply notice the breath without changing it. Then you become aware of the physical sensations in your body. Your eyes are still closed. Move your fingers and your toes. Listen to the sounds around you. Notice if there are any aromas or if there is a taste in your mouth. And then you rub your arms. And a good method for human beings is to also rub your earlobes since many of the major meridians of your subtle body pass through the earlobes. And then finally, you open your eyes and look around. If you have experienced a particularly deep state, you might still find yourself a bit disoriented. In this case, I suggest you rub the, sole, the soles of your feet with your thumbs, using your thumbs to rub the center of your feet particularly, and then all the toes. And then back to your earlobes and then vigorously rub your arms. After a few minutes of this, your nervous system should be relinked to the physical reality of your dimension. Sometimes after practicing the Nectura, you might feel tired. If this happens, then it would be helpful to lie down and rest and even take a nap if possible. The Nectura is an Arcturian treasure that has been handed down in our civilization for millions of years. It is a personal pleasure and honor to present to the human community this method for entering other dimensions of consciousness. May you use it wisely, and may you bring back to your life and your human relationship the treasures that you discovered in the other realms of your consciousness.